Luce and Town have submitted a detailed planning application to move to Power Court. Now this is a significant moment for Luton Town Football Club, the fans, the surrounding area. It's absolutely fantastic. Gary Sweet has gone on record saying Luton Town have been the hardest football club to relocate in the history of English football. And you know what? He's right on the money. This is a football club that has been attempting to move for 70 years, maybe a touch over 70 years. So what are my thoughts about this detailed planning application that's been submitted? Well, to make a long story short, I love it. I love the look of the stadium. I think it's sensational. It's smack bang in the heart of Luton. It's right in the center of town, right next to the train station, right next to all the pubs. It's going to be absolutely fantastic for the local area. It's also great to see that St. Mary's Church are right behind it as well. They have put out a statement saying, we back this, we want this to happen. And that's exactly what you want to hear. So just briefly about what's made it so hard for Luton Town to relocate. A brief history of it, in fact. Luton Town moved to Kenilworth Road in 1905 from the Dunstable Road ground and we had to move because the owner of the Dunstable Road ground decided to sell it on short notice and not tell us, not give us much time to leave, so we had to relocate. That's where Kenilworth Road story begins in 1905. In 1955, the club chairman at the time, Percy Mitchell, thought, hmm, it's probably time to relocate. We've been here for 50 years, you know, can't stay in the same stadium for 50 years, right? So he proposed the idea to relocate to a 30,000 seater stadium. And lo and behold, in 1959, the idea came about to move to a 50,000 seater stadium, right? I don't know how they went from 30,000 to 50,000, but it happened. And this new stadium was proposed to be between Luton and Dunstable, really close to the M1, or at the time it was the London to Yorkshire motorway, because the M1, wasn't a name at the time and it didn't happen obviously but it was meant to be the pride of southern england and what a sight it would have been in 1982 the first proposed move to milton Keynes came about and quite rightly the fans protested and got it thrown out because you know you can't just relocate a team it's almost 20 miles away it's quite far so it got thrown out, the Hatters hotline was set up and the fans mobilized, correctly so. And a move to Milton Keynes was on the cards for the next two decades, really. People were tapping up the club, trying to get them to move. But unfortunately, Wimbledon succumbed in 2002 and relocated and became, I hate saying it, the MK Dons, sadly the Bletchley Steelers. And then we move into the 90s. David Kohler at the wheel at Luton Town and inspired by all the fancy American stadia from USA 94. He decided he wanted to make a dome-like stadium and he selfishly, selflessly, wanted to call it the Kohler Dome. And this was written about in so many program articles it was every other week it was written about david kohler's grand vision for the kohler dome and it actually made it to planning application stage it, it was being assessed and funnily enough it got thrown out because the secretary of state said the m1 just wasn't wide enough huh. so i guess when they actually did eventually get to widen the m1 from junction 5 to junction 10 in uh, the early 2000s i'm sure david cola every time he had to do a motorway journey i bet he was just seething just at the wheel like oh look at these wide oh these four lanes anyway enough about david cola eventually he was ousted from the club and mike watson chalice lifelong luton town fan bought the club and he bought some land on Junction 10. And what happened to that land? Well, now Luton Town owned that land and we got planning permission for it and we sold it for quite a tidy sum. And that's currently being developed. But that land was mooted for a while by Mike Watson Chalice to be the new home of Luton Town Football Club. It just never happened. And then, well, I guess 
we can talk about John Gurney, right? So he was only at the club for 55 days, but he also had a grand plan for that land. It's a nice chunk of land. He wanted to build a 70,000 seater stadium with an F1 track. The stadium would be up on stilts. Just ludicrous, really. Who would have thought that? But he was gone and he was mad. So let's not think about John Gurney, shall we? I know I try not to. And then in 2007, our, our custodians, J10 Stadium Limited, ironically called J10, they actually proposed building a stadium on J12, Junction 12 by Toddington. And fortunately, before the application really was going anywhere, we were taken over by our current custodians, 2020 Limited. And the application was withdrawn, fortunately. And our current owners, who are Luton Town fans, they set about trying to build a stadium in Luton, keeping it in Luton. And that's all that really matters. So this has been in the offing for a long time. Initially, the plans were looking for a feasibility study. Where is the best place to build a stadium? And then they came upon the plot of land, the derelict power court site. It used to be a great power station, and now it's just a contaminated wasteland that's used as a parking lot by the NCP. And without doubt, this is one of the toughest plots of land to redevelop. Probably anywhere. Anywhere you could pick to build a football stadium, this is the one place you wouldn't want to build it. There's the River Lee that goes through it as well. That's got to be relocated. But you know what? They have persisted and they are, they've done all the hard stuff. They've done all the feasibility. They've done the decontamination. The work with the environmental organizations is, is pretty much full steam ahead. And the river will be moved, relocated. The land will be decontaminated. And you know what? It looks like they've only gone and done it. In 2019, they got the planning permission when we were in league one that big week if anyone remembers it nathan jones had just left the club for the first time and we had that double bubble planning permission meeting at the council i remember watching that that was tense just didn't know what was going to happen but you know what they got that planning permission for a 17 and a half thousand seater stadium Wait, 17 and a half thousand, but we've just put in a detailed planning application for a 25,000 seat stadium. Well, plans change. And as the popularity of Luton Town has grown and the club has moved into the mainstream, I guess that happens. So it was 17 and a half thousand originally with permission to up it to 23 and a half thousand. But when we got to the Premier League, things changed. Luton Town became quite a popular club amongst football hipsters. So why would people want to come to Luton Town Football Club? And most importantly, would we fill a 25,000 seat stadium? Well, you know what? I think we could fill it. Yes, there'll be some football tourism, but football tourism is part of what makes football fantastic. Have you never been to another country and thought, well, you know, I'm in the area. Let's see if I can get some tickets for, for a local game. Why wouldn't you? And Luton Town is, it will be situated right next to the station. It's a great location. And that station is 15 minutes to the airport with the dart. It's just incredible. It's, it's, it's such a brilliant move because you know what? I, I think Luton Town fans will be able to fill up most of that stadium. Right now, we sell out 12,000. There are 6,000 on the waiting list for season tickets, plus casual fans who want to pick up a ticket as they go. Why wouldn't they want to go? So right away, we're closing in on that magical 20,000 mark. Plus we have to give away fans an allocation. Why not have like an extra thousands or 2,000 earmarks for people just flying into Luton and 
looking for something to do before they catch their flight after they caught their flight why not it's an absolutely brilliant move there's going to be a hotel on site there's going to be a music venue there's going to be residential apartments it's a plot of land that's bigger than the one that the Emirates Stadium was built on for Arsenal it's just amazing and i am so excited they dropped the pictures on the website today and you know what it looks incredible yes you can't read too much into the pictures maybe the stands are a bit too far away from the pitch but you know what you can't build another stadium like kenilworth road these days health and safety there are there are reasons the the, the crowd can't be that close to the pitch it might not be as far away as it looks on the pictures but you know what? Most of that will look like it actually is on the on the redesigns. I love the halo. Absolutely love the halo. The floodlights going all the way around, by the way, they are like that because it is in the flight path. So the lights have to be pointing down. And you know what? It's very unique. It looks absolutely incredible. The club, the architects, the team that Gary Sweet has put together have absolutely knocked this out of the park and i am so excited there's also going to be a museum on site run by hatter's heritage that you can see the memorabilia you can touch the well probably can't touch the memorabilia it is a museum after all you can see it you can try and smell it you can see malcolm mcdonald's old boots you can see ron balaam's england caps it's gonna be amazing it's gonna be a whole match day experience and i cannot wait it's gonna open up possibly ahead of the 27-28 season. But you know what? Let's just enjoy Kenilworth Road as long as we have it because it's it's the last bastion of old English football. And let's enjoy it while we have it. Anyway, please like this video. It only takes a second. And subscribe to our channel for more content like this. And a big thank you to our audio partners, Blackstar Amplification and Carry On for making sure that we sound great. And also thank you to the record shop in Amersham. If you're in Amersham, go check them out and mention that you were sent there by the OK Football Show. You'll get a discount. Thank you all for tuning in. And I believe we have a game tomorrow. So come on, you hatters.